On February 26, 2023, around 1 a.m., Courtney McKinney driving with seven other family and friends were on their way to a credit union in Midtown St. Louis. As Courtney approached the intersection at Grand Avenue and Forest Park Parkway, their Tahoe was struck by a vehicle driven by 34-year-old Cedric Dixon. The impact caused the vehicle that Courtney was driving to strike a wall before flipping off the overpass, landing on its roof below. Badly injured and now fighting to live, you're about to hear from Courtney McKinney, Elijah Slayton, and Seven Robinson Lenny Sr., three of the survivors of this horrific crash to claim the lives of four innocent young adults. The crash was horrific enough, but the treatment received afterwards, or lack thereof, was more horrific and traumatizing. Make sure you leave a comment below and let us know how you feel about the handling of these young men. Interviewed by VOP News, The Voice of Cam, and Street Talk, here's what happened in their words. We begin with driver Courtney McKinney. Coming off the highway, what did you see? Walk us through it. So uh, I was getting out of Forest Park and Grand. Uh, I was getting, I was on Forest Park. I was going through the light. If I even make it halfway through the light, I seen the front of my car. I just knew, I just knew it was hit. And when we got hit, instantly got hit. I just seen number black. Nothing but black. The whole time, number black. Boom, he got hit. I don't know. I'm just feeling a lot of, I just feel it's like moving a lot. So we just, boom, we hit. I guess we went over the thing. I felt when we hit the ground. I didn't know we fell on, like, down. Right. Like, we hit the ground. My whole back, like, it, it hunched up. And then, I just, it was just over then. Seven on the side of me, tripping, like panicking, kicking, kicking me. I'm like, come on, man, calm down. Just calm down. Let's get out of here. Calm down. So he's like, hey, you trying you finna leave me. Calm down. I said, no, let, it, let me get away out of here for us. Calm down. If you don't calm down, we ain't gonna be able to get out of here. So he said, my son, my son. I gotta go see my son. I gotta make it see my son. So boom. I don't know. Some way we just seen some light. We instantly got out. Instantly, and I, I don't think on my head is this car maybe finna blow up. So when I got out, I ain't gonna lie, first thing came in my head. This day I'm gonna make her money. She used her car. So I instantly, my heart dropped. It dropped. I didn't know what to do. I couldn't barely move. I was walking, so I, I, like, I was leaning. So I, I finally sat down because I couldn't breathe. But as all this happening, a lady came running from, in her car saying she's a nurse. Because he's trying to help us. The SLU, campus, whatever, they were security guard, police, whatever they call themselves. They, they, they blocked it off. They come down. They yelling at her saying, get in your fucking car. Like, they making her, demand her to get in her car from helping us. She said, I'm a nurse. I, I know what I'm doing. They said, we don't need your help. We don't need you. Get in your car. So she said, "Okay, okay, okay." Cause they, uh, they, they holding their gun. They, they, they're like they, they ready to shoot. So she get in her car. They, they doing what they doing. They not look. They not worried about us. Mm -hmm. So we, we, uh, we land on the ground. He just like, bro. We hope they good. We just, we just keep talking. We hope they good. We hope they good. Like, you know, get them out. So boom, Jaira gets to crawling out. She land on the ground. Shaking, I can't move no more. So at this point, we all just talking. We was talking for so long, like that's how I know. That's how we know we down. We was down there for so long. Nobody was helping us. We yeah. just talking like we straight see them. Like we just we got a clear view of just looking in the car. But we see they shoes. We see they pants. We can't see they face because it's so dark. So we just in there, like bro. We hope they're okay. We hope they're okay. So by then. I see, I see Eli walking from the little other end. I'm like, dang, when you get out? Like, I knew somebody got out, but I didn't know who it was. I'm like, dang, when you get out? I like, mean, I've been got out. I sound like, you good, you good? I'm like, no, I ain't good, but I'm good. Like, I'm good. I'm like, all right, boom. All right, can you, uh, can you let us know where you were sitting at in the vehicle? Uh, I was sitting second row seat behind seven, behind the passenger seat. 
All I know is we was coming off the highway and finna go to the uh, credit union because they said they need to stop and get some money off the card and shit. So we coming through the green light. It's We not even going that fast. I say we was going at least like 20, 30 coming off the highway. All I see, all I hear was somebody called Courtney name and I look over to the right. As soon as I look to the right, somebody smacked the car. Airbag hit me all in my face. I, I feel like I blacked out for a couple seconds because it's like, dang. Because I felt, as soon as I woke up from my like, from me blacking out, I felt myself like just at a steady pace, like just sitting there while we falling. Because it's like, when you know, in the gravitational pull, pulling your body and stuff, it just got you sitting there. So it's like, we sitting there. And then as soon as we like hit the ground, my body just carried up and just moved and hit the back of the seat. So as soon as that happened, I'm like, bro, I gotta get out of here, I gotta get out of here, I gotta get out of here. I look back to my right, just get out the side where I was already at, climb through the window. I walk up the street, I'm just like, bro, I gotta call my mama, I gotta call my mama, I gotta call my mama, I can't sit down, nothing. Call my mama. They all the way out in Berkeley at my uncle's house. It literally took my pops and them cool, like 10 to 15 minutes to get there. It's a, I know for sure it's a, my mama, she an ex, uh, she used to be a paramedic and stuff. She, there's one right down the street downtown, and there's one on Vandervan. Ain't no way they got there faster than the ambulance and everything. That's all the way down the street, like cool, two, one minute away from where the scene was. And they got there fast. My mom and them got there faster than them. She, when they come running down the uh, street trying to come to me and stuff, come to us, try to help us, police trying to stop them. And then that's when they got the sense of urgency to try to help us and stuff like that. And I was like, bro, it's too late for all that. Because ain't no way my mom and them should have to come down here to get y'all to get the moving around and stuff helping people. And it's just like, I felt like that was just wrong. Let us know what you remember about the, the actual incident. So we were getting off the highway and we had the green light. We were going to stop at the credit union. Car. Everybody looked to the right. You could just tell, like it was a collect. Look to the right. You saw the car. You knew some some type of collision was about to happen. He smacked the car. He told me instantly his airbag hit him in the face. I'm still alive. I had my eyes open the whole time because I feel like if I closed my eyes, I was gonna die. So I kept my eyes open. Boom. We get smacked or some to the to the railing. I'm thinking we still cool. End up falling. I'm talking about you could feel the car flipping. The radio go off. You feel the car flipping, you fall. We hit the ground, it's pitch black. It's like one o'clock in the morning, it's pitch black, you know, on the highway. We crawl out, he crawling out. At first I was just gonna sit there and just accept it. I'm like, I'm, I'm gone, I'm just accepting it. And I kept thinking about my son, I just had a son on um, February 20th, and he, he still in the hospital, he ain't even came home yet. So I just kept thinking about my son. So I kind of like, you know, got a sense of urgency. So I start screaming and yelling, I'm kicking. I'm like, my son, my son, my son, we got to get out of here. So I see him, he crawling on top of me. I try to open the door, he grabbing my hand. And he trying to get out first so he could grab me out. I end up, like I said, it was pitch black. Somehow I see a light, open the door, kick the door open, crawl out, end up standing up. I'm standing up for him and he out. I'm looking for him. I didn't see Richard. I'm thinking Richard. He, I think he good, you know. I didn't see Richard. I see ant legs. I see corn legs. And then I see Brianna like over. And then while we trying to get out, she said his name. Then a lady, random lady came. Some minutes passed by, maybe like 10, 20, 15 minutes. Everybody just, we just sitting there like you were in shock. We literally standing up off adrenaline. And a lady came and she pulled over and she like, I'm a nurse, I'm a nurse, I'm a nurse. And she helped us. She called my mama. And when she called my mama, it was 1.24 in the morning. She started calling everybody else's mama. And I told you, I ain't see him. He walking back and forth off adrenaline. He called his mama. They was in Berkeley. They get to us before the medic, the EMT, anybody. And they were in Berkeley. And we right by Slough and we right by Barnes. 
So I'm like, I'm screaming on the sidewalk. The lady, that's, the guy at the car that was a nurse, she like, lay down. Once I sat down, I couldn't get up. All of a sudden, in the middle of this, Jaira climbed out the third row onto the street and sat right next to me. And, and she kept asking us, what happened? What happened? What happened? And we were telling her what happened. So now we sitting here, me, him, Jaira, and he's standing up, and we sitting here just looking at feet dangling. Until his mama came, and she the reason that somebody helped us. I don't know. I don't know who it was. I asked them to let me see their phone, but I can't remember my mama's number. I can't remember her number for a long time. Like it took me a long time to remember her number. So, boom. All that didn't happen. I didn't bang. I called her. Boom, boom. I kept getting up because I didn't know how to lay down or sit down. My whole body was hurting, so I kept getting up. And the dude yelled at me, sit back down. I said, I can't get up. Like, why I can't get up? So he said, oh, you can get up. So I got up. So uh, the, the MLMs, they came. Boom. They they fiddling with their bag. The lady taking her time opening the bag. The dude and moved her, opened the bag, and got to help it. But they never once helped me. Not at all. Never once helped me. They helping them. They doing everything. I'm saying, so when I'm going to get help? I'm asking when I'm gonna get up. They yelling at me, you move down here. You go down here. You sit down here. I said, no, I'm not sitting down at this point. Like, I, I can leave. Like, y'all not gonna help me. I can leave. Like, I can go myself, you know? So they telling me to sit down. There's about three of them around me. And one, look at one white tall cop. Like, smiling in my face, but smash his arm. On my, on my arm, this broke. My, my shoulder. So I instantly, like, ah, like, and turned and looked at him like, can you stop touching me? Like, don't touch me. So he's still smiling at this point. What's your social? What's your name? Like, demanding me to give it to him. So at this point, I'm trying to breathe because he didn't knock the, knock the last breath out of me. So I'm trying to tell him. Because I'm telling him I'm taking my time. So he's saying, tell me. Like, what is it? So I'm trying to tell him. I'm spelling my name. I'm doing all this. So at that point, they didn't strap them up on the stretcher and all that. Lady said, follow me. I said, hey, I can't breathe. Can you take me, like at least take me? She said, no, follow me. So at this point, she speed walking past. She, she left me, I'm moving so slow, barely can breathe. I see I see my stepdad up there. I'm like, he screamed my name. Where your brother? What, what, what Contrail? What Contrail, you good? I can't even say nothing to him. I just turned my head and walked to, to the ambulance. I got in the back, boom. I said, is you at least going to strap me in? She didn't even book me in. She said, no, you good. Just hold on. I said, what you mean? I think I had an accident. I wanted to be in the seat, but now can you book me in? She said, no. So the dude, she said, all right, you can get to doing his IV, doing his, the vitals, all that. So I was like, all right, I can't take this off. You can cut it off. Cut the jacket off. So he cut off the jacket. But he being manly and aggressive, so I'm asking him to chill out. You know, you're going to be good. You're going to be good. So he telling me I'm gonna be good, but I'm hurting at the same time. So he did all that, they did all that, we left. Then when we get to the hospital, I stand up, cause she was like, okay, you can go, go, go out that way. So I'm, I'm like, I need help getting up. He helped me get up, but he grabbing me like manhandling me on my, my side is hurting. Hey, you gonna be okay, you gonna be good. Like still tell me I'm gonna be good. So I'm, I'm trying to tell this man, just stop touching me, I got it myself. So he finally realized that I was, I got mad. So he let me go, I got out. They put me on the stretcher. So I'm all that happened. So it just they just didn't care about us, man. We was begging them to help. They didn't care. Um, well I thought was a police officer. I told him my visions was messed up, you know. Cause I was losing blood, I was coughing up blood, spitting up blood. And I kept saying, bro, I'm gonna die, bro, I'm gonna die. And I kept saying help so I can get them help because I knew at least another person could have made it. At least another person. So he kept asking me, what's your ID, your social, ID, social, ID, social. I'm like, this in my pocket. And if you watch the video, I keep holding my leg like this because my wallet was in there. And I had money in there. I had my debit card, my credit cards, and my IDs. So he asked for the ID. I said, it's in my pocket. He went in my pocket. He grabbed the ID. He took the ID out. He said, 
who do you want me to give it to? I said, bro, I can't see, bro. Give it to Alicia. Give it to Alicia. He's like the lady with the black jacket, which is his mother. He was like, yeah, I got you. Soon as the medics come, the EMT, and it's time to get put on the stretcher, he slipped my ID in my pocket and then gave me my wallet. I didn't think none of the situation. I'm like, he probably gave it to Alicia. You know, it, it's handled, it's good. Because why would you think after you just seen some deceased people, you would take something from somebody? So I get to the hospital. Bo, I get to the in the in the truck. They only got one stretcher. Everybody has the same back issue. We all have broken bones in our back. They didn't have a stretcher for him. They had him sitting up like this with no nothing and just IVs in our arm. And I'm the only person on the stretcher. Get to the hospital and we end up. Sunday I realized, I'm, oh, I still don't got my wallet. Well, later that day, I'm like, I still don't got my wallet. Come and find out. The, the person that stole my wallet in Chesterfield spending money. So if they spent the money on my debit card running to this credit, I mean, of course, they spent the cash and they spent the gift cards I had in there. And then they tried to lie about what time the accident was. It was not at 2.40 in the morning. It was probably like at 1. Mm -hmm. 1 on the dot. Because if I just said we were out there on the floor for 10, 15 minutes and my mother received a call at 1.24 a.m., how was the accident at 2.40? Because they left them bodies in there until about 6. Mm. And if you watch the videos, the first thing they grabbed was the guns. They didn't care about us. They didn't try to help us. They didn't bring enough help for us. They already called the people off as dead. They didn't check pulses. They didn't do anything. They just said they dead. Can you clarify when you say they, who are they? Whoever was on the Slew, scene. Slew security. Slew security. The only people that helped was what? The EMT? When they came? Who? I, I, the, the everybody. Nurse. The nurses. Everybody on the, the scene. So the they didn't do anything. Them. The police just grabbed some guns, man. They didn't do nothing. They didn't try to pull them. Everybody that got out the car got on their own terms. They didn't help nothing. They left them there. think um, more of you guys would have survived if you guys would have got immediate help? Definitely. Definitely. So everybody wasn't deceased on impact. It was uh... No. The girl was talking. Mm -hmm. Just like I was talking and screaming, she was talking. But nobody could get to her because you see how the car was in the back. It was missing a whole back tire. Just like Jaira, she didn't instantly get up and she still got out the car. Out the third row. The third row. So, so how did you feel when they sent the only help that y'all had away? Man, it, it blew me because I seen the fire department. They, they, they was going up to the, the, the Impala, but then they came back because they started flashing the lights, telling them to come back. I seen them come down with the chain, the saws and all that. They put it in front of the car. One of them officers or them sloop campus police officers told them, don't touch nothing, don't do nothing. I started seeing the saw with the light on top of it, ready to start. He finna open the open the car up, like he finna get them out. They told him no. So at that point, they left before us. We didn't pull up, we didn't get up yet. The, the fire department left. So at that point, they left, like we ain't got nothing else to do with this, you know, at our lead, so. I was just hurt, like. So, <clears throat> let me get this straight. The fire department pulls up. Ambulance paramedics ain't there yet. No. The police tell the fire department it's good, and then they leave. Yes, like don't don't touch nothing. Don't touch nothing. Mm -hmm. Cause when they open the door and they just looked in there with a flashlight, I still gonna see when they had the flashlight in there. They said, oh. Oh, uh, they dead. Yeah. Then they gonna say, how many in there? Uh, uh, four dead. I'm like, dang, y'all just gonna say they dead. Y'all not gonna check and check a post? I'm saying, you ain't gonna check a post? Uh, we don't need to. You ain't gonna they dead. They said, they said, there's three in here. Oh, uh, where's the other one? Where's the other one? How many guys were in the car? Eight. Where's the other guy? Oh, uh, three, three in this car dead.
You know what I mean? Like what saves you was the determination to say, let me get up, let me move Excuse around. Me. Because you know, what saved them was the parents start arriving. Mm -hmm. Civilians saved them while they were standing, flashing lights, searching for weapons. Civilians saved them. They didn't save them. They still attended to them when I arrived. Like I said, like you said, he saw his stepdad. We screaming, where's Courtney? Where's Quintrell? Where's so-and-so? Where, where? I heard somebody say, I got seven, I got Courtney. Like, we are they, they start attending to them when the parents start arriving. Like they said, they had no point in helping them at all. They searched my truck over dead bodies before they checked for a post. Mm -hmm. Let them DLV no, I'm sorry. I had this. I had to correct no, she, it. Like no, you, the civilian saved him. Now, the then, the, the woman the people, that allowed them to use the phone. The, the, nurse, the, the police that was there did not even try to allow them sympathy to use a phone to call for help. Yeah, they said you gonna get that one phone call. They let there, like, if it wasn't jail. for them civilians, they treated them like suspects. Mm. They, they told me that was a crime call. scene. What crime had been committed? It was an accident. They, said, they let them die. What crime have been committed? That's all I'm I still don't have access to my truck. Mm. They holding this under investigation. What, what What are you looking for in my truck? My, they got rammed off. What crime was committed? If it was a crime, where was the detective? What was the news crew? Mm. I sat there for about four hours. Four hours. Nobody came to talk to me. Just, I got just, antagonized. Just, just sit right there and I can swing this camera around on you. 